Don't settle for a path that isn't your own. For a white picket one-way ticket. Say no to comfortable, to safe, the easy way. Don't aspire for nine to five, zero drive, wonder, am I alive? Don't settle for a job you want to snooze the alarm on. If it doesn't set your soul on fire, keep searching, you've got time. Don't settle for closed minds, signs of the times, for coloring inside the lines. Don't settle for regret, for okay, for good, for great. Why stop there? Be better, do better. Better design, better brands, better business. Then, better your best. Don't settle for being a supporting character in someone else's story, for playing it small, playing it safe. Playing for the rule makers, the takers. Salute the game shakers. Then become one. Don't settle for ceilings when the stars are in clear sight. Hi there, welcome to Vega. My name is Carla Enslin. I'm Head of Strategy and privileged to be a founding member of Vega School. And of course, we are a brand of the Independent Institute of Education, an institute dedicated to academic excellence from higher certificate level right through to PhD level. A focus on strategic brand management and meeting up with two of my colleagues, Anna Vega alumnus, Monwa Bisi, uh, describes himself as a serial entrepreneur and will be sharing his own experience of a background in strategic brand management, studies in strategic brand management, and applying yourself to real world conditions and um, introducing new and original thoughts, certainly as Monwa Bisi does and has contributed over time. Also, my colleagues Cynthia and Michelle who will be sharing um, the various modes of delivery, but also the program design and nature of strategic brand management on honors level. I'd like to touch on three factors that I think you should be considering as you make your choice, as you navigate your way, not only in deciding on a specific postgraduate program, but also an institution and the academic faculty that you will be engaging with, the people you will be collaborating with on the program. And in this context, one needs to consider what it takes to undertake an honours and work your way to master's level, to perhaps engaging with an income or a PhD in due time. And it's best described by the following slide. At this stage, you've, you've really matured your, your understanding of critical strategic concepts. Um, and perhaps you've had the opportunity to um, invest time in industry, pursue either part-time or full-time um, projects in industry, but you have a stronghold in a particular degree level of marketing or finance where you've applied strategic concepts and constructs in a very specific space. What an honest program enables you to do is now relate these concepts and tools in a very specific environment, not only to one another, but to real world conditions. So you're really lifting into a space where you're engaging with greater complexity and understanding the systemic nature of things. What does it take to, to create an original and meaningful brand? What does it take to engineer a business model that is going to deliver on such a brand's promise? Whether this is a new contribution to a specific service or product portfolio in an existing corporate environment, or whether this may entail a new entrepreneurial venture, it's understanding the relationship between things. And then, of course, it's great and bigger, more challenging and complex context, industry, category, 
um, that really challenges us on, on this level to mature our depth and thinking and reasoning, um, but is specifically our ability to apply ourselves to real world conditions. This thing matures our thinking, our independence, as we eventually engage with master studies and perhaps an income in which we can make a significant um, independent research-based contribution to a field extending knowledge in a particular field, which eventually matures into doctoral studies and that challenge of making an original contribution to a field. Situate yourself. Situate your own choices. Understand what it is that you are undertaking on honors level studies and what it is that you need to equip yourself with in preparing for further academic studies. The three factors that I think you should consider relate, first of all, to curriculum design. To what extent does the program that you have in mind not only uh, enable you to mature your, your academic reasoning, your academic uh, depth in terms of thinking, but also, and, and very importantly, your ability to apply models and tools to practice. To what extent will the BCom honors you have in mind um, create opportunity to engage with real projects, real briefs, real time. Case studies are valuable and case studies introduce rigor in thinking, but it's also your ability to engage with real briefs, real circumstances, and experience the complexities of industry, brand management, business modeling, real time that is critical on honors level. Secondly, consider the faculty. We are individuals uh, passionate about our academic fields. And that of course is often the case at public institutions too, or in other private environments. What you need to consider is to what extent the faculty supporting the program are passionate and active in their academic fields and practicing in real world industry environments. You need to be engaging with an academic faculty who applies their thinking to practice and certainly arrives with the rigor of practical application and conversation with their academic team. And as much as you consider faculty, consider the larger fraternity, the third factor. If you are in a niche environment dedicated to strategic brand management, you are likely to meet up with individuals equally interested in the field and the potential future leaders in this space. The individuals you will be soundboarding with, collaborating with, working with in transdisciplinary teams on real world projects are the individuals you will be shaping your career with. Um, the strategic alliances that you will be depending on in future. Another factor to consider, we are offering a scholarship on BCom honors level and a very specific challenge if you regard yourself as a creative solution seeker. Submit a portfolio and convince us in max four pages of the following two things that in your degree studies, um, or perhaps in undertaking um, a career in strategic brand management, marketing or finance, you've had the opportunity to share an original and compelling idea, an argument and execution of any kind but that you've contributed, you've produced. Secondly, you've had the opportunity to collaborate with others. And in the process, you believe that you've actually made a significant contribution. Two challenges, one portfolio, maximum four pages. 
And in the process, the opportunity to engage with a strategic brand management scholarship in a dedicated program, navigating your way into a significant future. Please also pay attention to the requirements and the specifications that you have on slide um, and that you can certainly return to post this presentation. Um, all applications need to be submitted to our national senior contact navigator, Diabalt Himan, and there you have his email address. Max four pages, one portfolio, and one opportunity to engage with a scholarship and of course a career in strategic brand management. My pleasure to hand you over to Michelle in considering those three factors I've mentioned, curriculum design, the nature of the academic faculty you'll be engaging with, and of course, the community of people that you'll be collaborating with. Wishing you every success. Thank you so much um, to Dr. Carla Enslin for her wonderful introduction and uh, to the, the very exciting, challenging uh, and awesome space of postgrad study. So what I'm going to take you through is um, the detail of our BCom Honours in Strategic Brand Management um, and just to show you uh, where our BCom fits in in our other Vega offerings is there are diplomas, advanced diploma, postgrad diploma, uh, several honors programs, um, and then our BCom honors, which is obviously what we're focusing on, can also articulate into um, a master's program. Just very quickly uh, to have a look at what the entrance requirements are or admissions requirements. You do need a cognate or appropriate bachelor's um, degree, which is usually a BCom or a BBA um, with the relevant uh, focus on business, brand or marketing. And you please do need to have accounting or financial management and economics or stats um, at undergrad level. Your minimum final year average should be 60% um, or an average of 55 to 59, but at least 60% in your designated core discipline. You, we can also recognize previous learning so that is for the individual who may have been in business for several years, um, did a degree in another field initially, but has the brand, business, commerce experience uh, for us to be able to recognize that learning. But the contact navigators will be able to give you um, more information on that. We offer our BCom honors um, in three modes, full-time contact, part-time contact, and online. So the full-time student is the student who is going to come onto campus, who uh, really is there from eight to five, five days a week. Your lectures could be scheduled at any time during those hours. And there's a lot of group work that takes place on campus. The part-time student is generally the student who is working, uh, who therefore comes onto campus one or two evenings a week, depending on how many modules you're doing, but usually two evenings a week and some Saturday mornings, 
uh, when we do presentations or have guest lectures. And then the online student uh, is the student who wants to study primarily um, online in their own time, in their own space, uh, from wherever they wish to study, but comes uh, online one evening a week per module uh, to touch base with a navigator, with other students um, who are also obviously studying online. So all three modes uh, are available, but for all three modes, it's important uh, that we just uh, stress that postgraduate study is about independent learning. So it is about preparing uh, your materials before you come to class, whether those classes are on campus or online, you do most of the theory utilizing um, online platforms that we provide, uh, your textbooks, your module guides. Uh, so a postgraduate student does most of that, prepares for the sessions, and then the class time is dedicated to simply uh, obviously clarifying any theoretical components that you may want clarification of, but then it's all about application. It's facilitated engagement. Students come to class prepared to be able to discuss uh, the case studies, the brand scenarios, etc., that we focus on. So our BCom Honours in Strategic Brand Management, what are we doing? We are investigating and applying strategic models and tools to the practice of innovative and cost-effective brand management. So that's important at Vega. We are looking at doing things in an innovative way, creative problem solving, creative thinking, are the soft skills that are in demand um, in all businesses today. So we focus um, on that way of thinking, but obviously founded on very robust financial and economic principles. Um, our brands are there to create equity and to be profitable um, in the long run. So the modules that you would be doing um, for your BCom, first of all, brand and brand building, which is where um, we co combine our group, our BA BCom students, so that everybody is on the same uh, page with regard to what is a brand, what is brand building, uh, what are the differences between business, marketing, brand, brand communication. Um, and we see holistically all the puzzle pieces um, that need to fit together to build a brand. Our BA and BCom students are then specializing in different areas of that puzzle. Um, but it's very important that they all come together at the end of the day. And so um, in that module, we look at ways of thinking, we look at areas like um, the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, how do brands and businesses operate during, uh, you know, those sorts of eras as opposed to traditional brand building eras? Uh, what do we need to change? How do we look at trends? Um, and then moving on to how do we do research uh, to ensure that our brands remain relevant, that we actually fully are fair with trends. What, for example, is going on with artificial intelligence um, in our particular brand building world? So we look at those. We then have a look at how do we build a brand's identity, a brand's architecture uh, to ensure, again, that brands within a portfolio for a business are all working together to create um, stakeholder satisfaction and brand equity. So once we are all on the same page, 
um, the BCom students would focus on strategic brand management and leadership. So this is taking the principles of business management, business leadership, and now understanding how they are actually um, implemented in different brands, because different brands have different values, different cultures. And so the way we implement what we've learned uh, about business management and leadership um, now needs to align to the brand, to the brand persona, to the brand behavior, etc. cetera. Um, so that's an area of specialization um, that you are now applying. So the type of projects that um, our students there are doing is looking at uh, everything from JSE listed companies to the management of small businesses um, to social innovation and just um, having a look at strategically how would we manage those brands. Um, the module on financial, economic, and legal aspects, uh, one would do next. Uh, one of our senior lecturers, Cynthia, will take you through uh, some of the detail there, uh, because I know uh, many of you want to know a little bit more about the finance and economics, etc., uh, within our degree. Um, and then, you will do a module called Practice of Brand Building. Again, uh, you would collaborate with BA students. Um, you will collaborate with some of our undergrad and creative students in the course of this module. And this is where we very practically um, facilitate the way in which you put together a whole brand strategy. So you will work with case studies, different brands, um, to actually have a look at how they do research, um, what type of research you would need to be able to do to assist in the strategic growth of that brand. You will have a look at how, for example, you put together the situation analysis, the SWOT, those things, those frameworks that you are familiar with. Um, but we now, uh, help you, we facilitate, we guide you um, to do it very, very practically, because as I'm sure you know, Vega students have a reputation for being able to hit the ground running once they get into industry. And it's because we have been through very practically um, enabling you to put these strategies together. And that culminates in your brand challenge project, which is where you actually work for a real client. And the client comes in, briefs you on a brand strategy challenge, and you work, as I said, with uh, other students to actually pull it all together. Um, business brand management is about collaboration. So you as the BCom students, uh, might be focusing more on things uh, like the product strategy, some of the logistics, uh, pulling together the budget, while the communication students might be focusing more, obviously, on putting together a media strategy. But it is about collaboration to put together a fully synthesized, streamlined strategy and plan at the end of the day. Okay, so that's uh, basically the outline. Uh, some of the projects our students have been working on in the last couple of months, uh, they've been looking at an ice cream brand uh, that is made from insect um, milk, etc., which is quite an interesting one. We've been looking at innovation and in the fourth industrial revolution uh, with COVID, with the smokers, um, we've done a project on that. We've had a look at Discovery, which is obviously um, a brand that's been hugely impacted by COVID. Uh, we've been having a look at Coca-Cola, how they have been responding to COVID strategically, and at WeWork, uh, which obviously is communal workspaces, 
what is their brand um, going to have to do to rebuild itself um, post pandemic. So our projects are current. Um, one of the major advantages at Vega is our focus on industry, industry speakers uh, in and out all the time. We do some speed briefs uh, where a client might say, you know, would your students like to work on a quick project? Um, we, you know, we want some research or we're keen to do a design thinking brainstorming session. Uh, we do projects together, as I've said, with um, students from other areas and disciplines. Um, the navigators, the Vega navigators, are all um, people with industry experience and contacts. They bring uh, guests into their lecture sessions, uh, again, just to emphasize how theory plays out in the real world. Um, our students have interactions with our alumni. So you will be able to chat to Vegas students who graduated two or three years ago uh, about the things they found important, um, you know, how to prepare for an interview, what about internships, salary expectations, career paths. So our alumni come back in for very interactive sessions. And then uh, we do have the opportunity to participate in competitions, conferences, uh, webinars um, that come our way. So just to uh, finish off on my side, the brand challenges and some of the um, clients that we worked on in 2018, uh, you can see is quite a variety from banking brands to uh, a black label initiative and to smaller, um, smaller brands, but equally exciting brands. And we obviously do a, a fair percentage of our work is done, as I said, on social innovation brands, um, on not-for-profit brands, which have managed to keep businesses going through the pandemic. Very interesting how suddenly business realized they're not going to cope without the support um, in many, many industries and areas of the NPOs. Okay, and then just a couple of the competitions uh, that we get involved in, Microsoft Design Expo, uh, which we're currently working on again this year uh, to present to Microsoft at uh, you know, their headquarters team in the United States. We are uh, presenting to them and then very proud of a team who went through to the national finals of the L'Oreal um, Paris Brandstorm this year. So uh, a lot, I think you can see, are very exciting practical applications um, in the brand and brand building space. Uh, but just to finish off, um, on the financial uh, module specifically and the business simulation, um, I'd like to hand over uh, to one of our senior navigators, Cynthia Olmstahl. Thanks, Cynthia. Thanks, Michelle, for introducing everyone to the BCom Honours. So I'm just going to move into one of the specialist modules, and it's a module called FELS. And why am I going to talk about it? Because it's the one that students find sometimes the most scary, but also the most interesting. So just going back to the slide that Michelle showed you, and that was the one that uh, where it says you need what your prereqs are. So in order to do this qualification, you need accounting or financial management, and then you, that needs to be combined with economics or stats. So the module I'm going to talk about is FELS, which is finance with economic and legal aspects. But if you've only done accounting, you may find this a little uh, at first, but we do help you through it as much as possible. Okay, so 
what is it founded on? Fells is founded on what we mean by financially healthy brand. So that's what we will be talking about. We will spend time saying what makes a financially healthy brand or a financially healthy company. And we all know we've seen our measure of companies that are not financially healthy or have managed to escape scrutiny. And that's why this module becomes so important because it combines finance with economics and then with legal governance and ethics aspects. So if we look at the finance part of the module, and of course it is completely integrated, we're looking at a brand and, and it's important to understand when a brand or a company is financially healthy. So it's looking at finance, it's looking at the drawbacks of finance. There are drawbacks. There are gaps. And understanding the environment in which a brand or a company operates and to which it needs to respond. So organizations and brands, as you know, need to be agile. They need to be able to respond to the environment. We look at analyzing financial records and reports to understand whether a brand is financially healthy or not and being able to offer recommendations for improvement. If we move on to the economic aspects, why is the economic context important for a brand? And what we will explore is market structure and the profit potential in a competitive environment. We'll look at pricing, price elasticity, can you increase your price? Will that mean increased profit or will it mean that all the customers will run away? We'll look at uh, the world of economics and how economics influence brands and managing and changing circumstances. So who knew a year ago that some companies would go out of business because of COVID? Who knew, who forecasted this year to not make a profit? Unlikely. And then fi the final part of this module looks at why laws and regulations with which a, a brand needs to comply, why are they important, why is corporate governance important, and what's happened to ethics and why are ethics important. So this is about brand reputation and responsibility. So yes, this is quite a dense module, but it's intriguing, it's interesting. We explore what's gone wrong with brands. We explore the Steinhoffs. We explore the knock-on effect. Steinhoff really managed to uh, uh, commit major fraud. What has it done to its subsidiaries? What has it done to Ackermann's? What has it done to Incredible Connection? What has it done to hi -Fi Corporation? Those are all subsidiaries of Steinhoff. What does it mean? And then the cherry on the top, you will uh, examine and you will apply everything you've learnt in a business relation. This is you spend three days, two to three days. Uh, we've we found in in contact two days, but three days. You work in groups. You run a company. You sell product. You manage the operation. You manage the manufacturing. You manage it in different economic circumstances. You manage it through wage negotiations, through strikes, and in a competitive environment. It's very exciting. It's competitive. It's quite thrilling. And we, we had our um, business simulation on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, two weeks ago, and the students are still raving about it. So it really is, and this is what we're preparing you for. We're preparing you for that world of competitive, um, but still still managing meaningful brand. So are you holding your own? Are you sufficiently agile in the economic circumstances? So that's what FALS is all about. And that's it from me. I welcome your questions a bit later on.
students. Education. South Africa. It's no secret. The world's in a pretty weird place right now. These are curious times. Times of unrest. Uncertainty. Change. Today, I'm taking a stand. I'll fight the good fight. The fight against indifference. Mediocrity. Endless rows of status quo. But this war, I rage on my own terms. It's simple. The way I shape the future is by being in the position to shape the future. No brainer, right? My challenge? New solutions to old problems. To think the unthink. There's a thought. My reward? Create things that will blow your mind. <sighs> and just maybe make this world a better place. Yeah. 2020. The three most valuable skills on my CV? Complex problem solving. Critical thinking. And you guessed it. Creativity. My role in society is so much more than it was 10 years ago. An idea has never been as powerful as it is today. If brands have the means to make the world a better place. And we have the ability to guide them. Do we not have a responsibility to steer them towards a more sustainable future? Design can change the world. Strategy can change the world. Business can change the world. Brands can change the world. I can change the world? Yeah. I'm the new guard, future leader. Transcending age, race, gender, and any other little box they try to squash me into. I march to a new beat, and it ain't Wall Street. Who am I? I'm Gen V. Generation Vega. The generation for change. I'm where business, brands, and creativity meet. Unapologetically driven. Fiercely courageous. Ever the optimist. It's a mindset. My mindset. And my mind is set. No one will never change the world. Lucky for me, I'm not only what the world wants, I'm what it needs. I can hear them calling my name. I'll see you at the boardroom table. Top floor. Hello, everybody. My name is Francois. I'm the campus head at the Vega Johannesburg campus. It is such a pleasure to have a conversation with an IIE Vega alumnus, Monwa BC Tete. Uh, Monwa BC, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Monwa BC, you completed your Vega postgraduate uh, honors in strategic brand management a while ago. And we just want a little conversation with you around your academic career, uh, your study career, a little bit about your uh, business, as well as uh, what the future may hold. Um, you've been described as many things, a serial entrepreneur, a demanding businessman, um, a restless visionary. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Hello, Francois. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're giving away my age when you're saying a little while ago. But uh, it's, 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 been, it's been a while, actually, but a, a very interesting and an amazing journey. Um, doing Vega was probably such an eye-opener for me. It, it kind of did the, the whole, the world is your oyster type of thing for me, you know. So we learned a lot. We fought a lot, um, particularly my group. And when I noticed who else was in that team, I can see that they're all doing very, very well for themselves. Um, so just a, bit, a brief background. I was raised in Springs, uh, played professional cricket and football for a little bit for my sins. Um, and then I went to University of Pretoria, where I studied BSc in IT, communications, finance, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I landed up at Vega, um, funny enough. I didn't know um, what to do after that, but I knew I needed to study something else. I needed, I needed to further my, my marketing side of my brain, you know, coming from BSc, which is very analytical, I needed to open up my sphere from what I knew and what I knew I was good at. So Vega was a really, really good test of uh, my thinking, testing my, my, my theories, my philosophies, and, and, and generally shaping the future of what I now do on a daily basis. Yeah. 
So how did you end up at Vega after your undergraduate at University of Pretoria? You know, um, I, I, I kind of always felt like I wanted to be in marketing, right? But everybody called themselves a marketer. You know, when I started out, everybody was a marketer. Everybody could market this and this. But when you actually looked at it, you, you, you found that a lot of people didn't have the qualifications to do that, right? And for me, um, Vega also presented an additional step, which was the strategy element to it, as well as the brand side of it, which at the time nobody was kind of covering, you know? So for me, it was very important to, to kind of have a bit of the brand side so that you understand the brand intrinsics, the thinking, how to strategize, how to communicate for future reference, which is what we currently caught up in now, funny enough, is what, what does brands look like for the future? What does those digital brands look like? What do brand companies move to um, from the future? So for me, you know, Vega kind of allowed me to play in that area, you know. Um, I think work and play are very similar, just like, you know, kids get taught, go to the jungle gym and, you know, you, you, you're learning neural this and you're learning how to balance and all these things. I think Vega for me is a playground for that as well. Well, at least it presented itself as a playground for me. Very good. Thank you, Monwa BC. And was it, was it frowned upon or was it, was it a difficult decision for you or to convince your, your family and your friends to study a brand management or known as a commerce qualification at a design school? It, it was because they, they almost felt like I was taking a step backwards, you know. Um, it was as if I, I had kind of given up on the commerce side of it. Um, and and for me, what it did is it, it, it was able to link up commerce and strategy thinking, particularly around understanding design thinking as well and understanding those that are in that space. Because ultimately, you know, when you see an ad on TV, you don't see the CEO of the company. You see a creative team that kind of encompasses what the CEO should be doing. So for me, it was a really good bridge and balance to get the two together to make sure that one is able to understand the commerce, the CEO thinking, what a CEO would want, and also what the designers and the, the creative team would want and how to marry those two together. I think for me, that's been my, my pivotal point um, or my critical success factors is understanding what business wants, understands what sales wants, understands what the analytical guys want and, and, and marrying all of that together. Nice. Um, previously, you referred to uh, your class, your colleagues in class. There was a lot of uh, debate and 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 even sometimes controversy, even disagreement. Can you yeah. can you remember a little bit more about your class experience in the Vega studio? Yes, I remember getting kicked out of class several times. Um, I remember uh, I won't mention the names of the lecturers that kicked us out, but his name was Kevin. So um, we'll just leave it at that. Um, but luckily, I wasn't the only one kicked out. So, um, but it was fun. It was it was it was to build us up. Um, the brand challenges that we did that was very grueling, um, very unforgiving session. Um, but also, we remember. I well, at least I remember it like it was yesterday, only because it it kind of toughened me up. You know, the thing that came out of those brand challenges is. If you get to a conclusion quickly, that's not the right conclusion. You need to delve in and keep going in and, and dive into the strategy and dive into the why, you know. So we see people like Simon Sinek that are into the why now. I think Vega's been doing that for a while. Very good. Um, tell us a little bit um, more about your brand challenge experience. Yeah, it was, it, you know, the build up to it sounded very easy. You know, we're going to be grouped together and, you know, find a, a company or company is going to find us and we are going to then present. But what it actually did was it was a setup for the real life situation because, you know, when brands come to you, they, they literally come to you with a brief and understand our brief. And how do we take this brief to the next level? And I think that's what a brand challenge offers the students is 
uh, there's no more safety net that's going to catch you. If a brand doesn't like what you've presented, go back to the drawing board. And that's what, for me, the brand challenge does. It, it kind of exposes you to the real live world, call it that. There's no, um, you know, stopping and going again. You know, when you start presenting, who are the strong presenters? How do you present? Um, how do you how do you make sure that you know you capture uh, the importance and the essence of what the client is looking for or the particular brand is looking for? And then how do you spew it out in a way that they will understand it, um, that they can work off it, that they can create from that as well? So there's a lot of things for me personally that came out in my own personal development from the brand challenge, how to work within a team how to know when you're the strongest or you're the weakest link within that team. How do the design things work? So it kind of teaches you those dynamics as well in a real life situation. And I, I'm going to keep referring to that because I think for me, uh, you know, moving from, from doing my honors uh, and the strategy to, to the real life situation was such an easier transition because I'd been through it. And I knew kind of what it was. Now that kind of changes with time, but you you kind of know the basics of what is required when you then start. Very good. Thank you, Monwa BC. Uh, looking back now, in what ways do you think Vega added value to your passion, to what you're doing now, making uh, such a difference in so many people's lives, in so many communities, yeah. in different um, um, your your colleagues. Uh, in what way do you feel Vega added value to that? Look, I think the question is, in what ways didn't Vega add to that? Um, it, it it kind of opened up a lot, you know, Francois. It 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 did um, what what I can call a lot of asking questions. It, it didn't answer anything for me, but it triggered a lot of questions and thinking for me to say, right, when, when you're in this situation, how do you think or how are you supposed to think or what are you supposed to take out of this? So for me, what I enjoyed about the Vega experience um, is it taught me a lot about myself. Um, and, and when you kind of start knowing the journey or traveling the journey to yourself, it's easier to, to then know that, okay, this brand is not for me, or this work is for me, or this is not. So you're able to pick up the elements for your own career, where you where you can then build from that. But equally, I think the one thing Vega did add to me was fun, you know? Um, it was fun. You can have fun at work. You can have fun doing your work. You can have fun creating work. And that kind of energy that you bring into to, to, to a corporate or to a brand, people need that. You know, I, I've taken that into my career to say, wow, I can actually have fun at work. You know, it's not a tedious thing where you, you can't even wake up and look for an opportunity to work. It just gets you straight into the deep end, you know, deep dive type of thinking. You know, strategy can be fun. You, you don't go to, you don't get a degree because you don't enjoy it. You get a degree because you've passed all the prerequisites for what you do and what you require. And once you've done that, then you can elevate your business or your, your career because you've got a good foundation. So what Vega gave me, even at honors level, was a good foundation to say, right, when you go and do this, what are the elements that you should be looking for? What is the foundation? So the deeper the foundation, the taller the building. And I think that's what Vega does. It gives you a good foundation. It asks you a lot of questions about yourself. And it also triggers a lot of thinking, you know. Um, people don't spoon feed you with answers. You know, I'm looking at your background now and I'm seeing blah, 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 blah. And Vega kills that blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it, you have to be the change. And, and it also allows you to be a misfit. I think that is the one thing that Vega gave me, is to say, you're a misfit, but you're okay. Lovely. Um, Monwa BC, uh, you're a good friend of Vega. Uh, um, you're part of our regional advisory council. Uh, we know you as someone who's passionate about education and about young people and the difference young people can make in the world around us. 
do you want to just share your thoughts and maybe a challenge to to those out there? Why do you believe the world needs strong strategic brand managers? The, the world is is very tough on its own, Francho. You know, it, it's it's a tough place to be. You know, so whether you're in the finance space or you're in the creative space or you are in, you know, the strategic space, um, I I think for me what 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 I enjoy about uh, being a Vega person, to call it that, is 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 it gives me the ability to be me in any of those circumstances. So if I'm looking at numbers, how am I looking at them? If I'm looking at brand, how am I looking at it? So I think for me, you know, going to Vega doesn't answer a degree. It does more than that. It, it, it takes you to school mentally because the theory will always be there. We know the theory. Uh, I think for me, the practical elements and and that's what education should do it should give you the practical elements to approach life not to um cram one plus one equals 11. you know it's to say okay if i add this one and i add that one potentially i could i could get into another space so that for me is the is the thinking that vega does for me it's it's not it's not, I, I see what you have to do from a formal perspective but the thinking is where it all starts. You know, that for me is very critical. And That's that fantastic. Vega is able to, to, to bring to the party as well. That's fantastic. Uh, Monwa Bisi, it's always so inspiring to talk to you. Um, we value your friendship to Vega and all the amazing things you do and helping people out there to find their purpose. Uh, thank you for your time and we hope to speak soon. Thank you, Francho. Thank you, Vega. So Brand Challenges is essentially a five-week program where we get given a client and we reinvigorate their brand. It's amazing that we get to experience like real life clients and then we get real budgets and we get real real life problems and as students we get to actually see what we do in the real life context. Vega students from all specializations get together and they work on a live brief for a live client. I mean first things like agency that that week is quite quite tough for the the creatives we come up with the name our values mission goals objectives anything it's like a full rundown of what we do yeah second week is research so that's primary and secondary research We've done focus groups, questionnaires, surveys, interviews. He has a, a, a brand and a client who needs something. These are their real, real issues. Real you know? issues. Help them come up with solutions. You guys yeah. have to think critically, innovatively, and you need to help them come up with um, the solutions for them. And in the end, you might win or you might not, but at least you've thought that. And, and also for me, I feel like we're at an advantage because I mean, other universities don't work with real clients. They just go in the theory and that's it. And I feel like at Vega, we have such an advantage to be able to do this. Third week is concepts. It's where we just pretty much just take all the yeah, research so much. that we've been doing in the in the previous week and boil it down into key insights, key insights and concepts. It gives you an understanding of time crunches. Um, it also helps you um, brush up on your skills. The fourth week is, is more concept development, so like concept. refining our concept into one big concept. The fifth week is just implementation. Presentation quality was world class. 
It has really exceeded every single expectation I could have ever had. Uh, we thought it was a really good idea and opportunity for us to see what the young minds can come up with. So my, I, the experience with Brand Challenge has been fantastic. Again, you heard from Katrine's um, feedback is that this is something, you know, with, with equal opportunity, some of the biggest agencies she's working with haven't come over the hill with some of this sort of thinking. So are they ready for industry? Are they definitely ready for industry? I've got no doubt about that, yeah. And I think every year they take on, um, they choose a ministry or a charity um, and they ask them to if they'd like to be involved. So we led to the chance to be involved. So it was amazing. Yeah, the, the insights, some of the insights were so profound. The way they presented it was so professional. And I thought, gosh, I could actually work with you. There's so much we could be doing, there's so much we should be doing that these students had shown us kind of a world of what was out there, of possibilities for our brand and for our organisation. And the challenge now is for us to take it and run with it. Hi Future Veganites, thank you for joining our virtual postgraduate evening. My name is Stephanie Philander and I'm a contact navigator at the IIE's Vega Town campus. My role as a contact navigator is to assist and guide you through your application and registration at the IIE's Vegas School. I form part of a dedicated contact navigator team across all five campuses and we are ready and waiting to assist you in taking the first step in starting your postgraduate journey at IIE's Vegas School. If you would like to reach out to a contact navigator, it's simple. One, you can email your campus of interest using the email address on screen now or Two, you can submit a callback request or an inquiry on the Vega website. One of our contact navigators will give you a call ASAP. Once you are ready to apply, simply visit the Vega website and click on Apply Now. Complete the application form and pay your application fee. The early bird application fee is 700 Rand. Please remember to have a digital copy of your ID as well as your latest transcripts handy. You can now conveniently upload all supporting documents with your online application. Once your application has been submitted, a contact navigator will be in touch with you regarding your application status. Should you be applying for the BA Honours in Graphic Design or the BA Honours in Interior Design, your contact navigator will brief you on the portfolio requirements and arrange for an interview with an academic navigator. After your submission has been approved, you will receive a letter confirming your application and your final step will be to register. Our contact navigators will be there to guide you every step of the way. We look forward to welcoming you to one of the IIE's Crayon Bright Spaces. Pretty. My name is Francois, 
Campus Navigator at the Vega Johannesburg campus. Thank you for joining our session today. We hope that we've answered many of your questions to make an informed decision about your future postgraduate career at Vega School. Thank you to all the Vega Navigators who made today's session possible. It is always a pleasure to share who we are, what we do, and why we matter with future Vega Knights. Thank you very much to Monwabisi Tete, the Vega alumnus and executive editor at BLQ, Black Life Quarterly, for joining the session today. Our Contact Navigator team is standing ready to support your application and registration process. Remember that you can connect with us through our website, our email, as well as the chat function at vegaschool.com. Our website has a very helpful frequently asked questions section as well. Registrations and applications are now open for 2021 studies. We look forward to welcoming you to a Vega campus. Thank you. Ready? Okay. Now more than ever, in a world of uncertainty, we reflect. Never before has our planet needed change makers and game changers more. Those who refuse to accept, roll over, settle. Now more than ever, we need bravery. Say no to apathy, to indifference, to what can I do? To being beat. Now's the time to rise up, rise above. Say yes to passion. Compassion is in fashion. Dash in forward, upwards and towards a future we want to live in. Pick up the pen. Now more than ever, we need creative minds, strategic leaders, brands built with purpose, businesses that look beyond the bottom line, who see sustainability as the starting line. It's time to rethink. Good thing us thinkers have been staring out of windows our whole lives, imagining better. Imagine that. An idea that changes the world is inside you. Now more than ever, there's hope. A hope that the greatest generation is coming up. A generation not defined by age, but by what it leaves behind. Now more than ever. Be, be, be the greatest. The greatest. The greatest. The greatest generation. Generation. Eba moloko o yipetile. Be the best generation. Eba maeta pele wakamunso. Eba se swana sumbulo ane spamile. Be the greatest generation. Be the greatest generation. Be the greatest generation.